All right, let's move on to some follow sets. So follow sets, despite the consensus online not having one, is not actually that difficult. The point of a follow set is to find the set of terminals immediately following a non-terminal call. While the first sets are about finding the given non-terminal and finding the immediate terminals that it can go to, what a follow set is attempting to do is look on the right hand side of a grammar, find the given function calls or the non-terminal calls and find what comes after it. So in this example, instead of starting at the bottom, like you do with first sets, with follow sets, we can start at the top. To find the follow of s, what we're trying to find is where we have a function call of that given non-terminal. And if we look on the right hand side of this grammar, we see that we actually don't have an s call anywhere. There's, there's no option for it. So in this case, the follow of s is simply the end of file. And there's two reasons for this. The starting, if you want the easy answer, the starting grammar which in this case is S, it's denoted by the grammar at the top of the list, always derives end of file in the follow set. So in this case, S would immediately derive end of file in the follow set. Now, the reason it's deriving end of file is if we have a given input string that has this form of AB, what we're saying is that after we've parsed through this A and this B, what follows it? What comes next? And in this grammar, what comes after B is nothing. We don't have anything left. We don't have any terminals left to consume. So what's left is the end of the grammar. And we have finished the definition of our starting grammar. Once our starting grammar has been finished, we can derive end of file because we have effectively found the end of the text file that has the grammar, such as you'll find in the project two. So in test two, for example, we see this is our grammar. And what we're saying here is that after we've consumed S or some definition of S, the pathway after S is the literal end of the file where we have finished consuming and analyzing all of our grammar and we have nothing left to consume. As such, we have reached the end of this file. It contains no more and we have derived it. For follow sets, we have two rules that we have to abide by. And these are our paths of execution for finding the follow set. In the first form for rule one, it can be denoted by alpha non-terminal, non-terminal being X, or just the non-terminal by itself, just X. In the second rule, it's denoted by alpha non-terminal beta, or just non-terminal beta. The form is just seeing how it will look in an actual grammar set. One thing to note about these two rules is that alpha is essentially a decoration. It is without function. So whether alpha exists or not, it doesn't matter. So you can see that in both of these rules, we have cases where alpha is a part of it and alpha is not a part of it. Alpha does not matter. It is not part of what we look at when we define the follow set. This is simply just formatting for visual purposes. So we're gonna keep that decoration just, uh, just sort of in the corner there. As we move on to this first one, the follow of S is what comes after our non-terminal call. In this example, we would look for the follow of S, we would look for any S calls on the right-hand side of the equations. And in B, there isn't an S call, in A, there isn't an S call, and neither in S. So for the follow of S, which is our starting grammar, we include end of file. We always include end of file in our follow set for our starting grammar. Guarantee you that will be a part of the midterm. It is always included because what we're saying here is that if this is our grammar, if S is parsing our input string and our input string is in form AB, then once we have consumed our input, there is no input left to consume and we have reached the end of the file. And so we derive the end of file. The follow set only focuses on non-terminals on the right-hand side of the equation. For the follow of A, we see that we have one A call on the right-hand side of the equation. And so this is the only one we're gonna focus on for follow of A. We do not focus on this A or any of this because it is not part of the follow set. So for this follow of A, we see our A here. We have our function call. We're gonna look at our rules and determine which one it is. This is the question you ask yourself when you are filling out your follow sets. Do we have something following our non-terminal? Well, okay. So do we have something following A? Well, we do, we have a B. So what that means is that we're going with rule two, 
where it's of the form non-terminal beta. And when we have this given rule, what we do is find the first of beta. In this case, it would be the first of B. So for follow of A, we find the first of B, which we have defined in our previous video, which the first of B in this case would just be B. And so we add that to our set. There is only one A call. And so we add the first of B, which is the immediate beta after our non-terminal and our follow of A is complete. Next, finding our follow of B, we see that B of the form, let's find out which form it is. Do we have something following it? We do not. There is no beta in this case, so we ignore rule two, and we go with rule one, which is of the form alpha x, or alpha non-terminal. When we have rule one, what we follow is the follow of x is equal to the follow of the rule, where the rule, in this case, is your non-terminal on the left-hand side. So, in this example, to find the follow of b, we see it's of rule one form, so to find the follow of b, we find the follow of s which is the rule. So we have follow of S, which is end of file, which functionally we can determine that it does make intuitive sense since this is the end of our input string and anything following the end of our input would be the end of file. This is the follow set of this first grammar here. For this equation, which once again is the one found in Adam Dupe's lectures, we're going to find the follow sets. So to start, let's find the follow of S. And to do so, we look at the right hand side of our equation and we try and find if we have any S call. We do not. And because it's our starting terminal, we simply have the end of file as our follow set. One important thing to note, epsilons cannot be in follow sets and end of file cannot be in first sets. Doesn't matter what's going on, it can never be the case. And in terms of formatting, epsilon should always be at the end of your first set if it's included. And the same thing for follow sets, end of file should always be at the end of your set. Assuming that it's part of the set already, that's simply formatting. So if we had a case like this where we had end of file and then let's say A, this would be bad formatting because our end of file should be at the end. So to find the follow of A, then we look at all of our A definitions on our right hand side. So we have to begin right here to find the follow of A. We look and see if we have a beta, which we do. So we follow this rule. The follow of X is the follow is the first of beta. So to find the first of this beta, we have the first of B, which according to our rule, right, which according to our problem right over here, the first of B is just simply B. So we would add terminal B over on our set, but we're not done. We're not quite yet because follow of A has multiple definitions. So we move on to our other A, which is of the form alpha non-terminal. So we would go with rule one, which to find the follow of A, we would find the follow of A. Now, because that's a recursive call to itself, we do not include it because we cannot escape the recursive call. We do not have a base case in that situation. So our follow of A would simply be the set B and we're finished. Moving on to our follow of B, we have one B call in our grammar here and we do have a beta. So we're gonna find with rule two, the first of C. So we have the first of C, which if we start to build our set up in our first set, our first of C is C and epsilon. But we remember with our rule that when finding the first of a non-terminal, we return the set of the non-terminal minus epsilon. So in this case, where we're finding the first of C, we would only return C. So we have C added to our list. We go back to B up here. We're find we found the first of C and because C can derive epsilon from our first set. We then look at the first of our next beta where beta is everything following your non-terminal. So to recap, B is our non-terminal that we're looking at. We're trying to find the follow set for. We look immediately to our right. We see we have a beta. We find the first set of it minus epsilon. If that beta can derive epsilon, we move on to our next beta and we find the first set of it. So union with the first of D. We look up to our first sets. We see our first of D is D and epsilon. Similar case, we would only include D and not epsilon. And in this situation, because both of our first sets following our B can derive epsilon, we now no longer have a valid input terminal following our B call or our B non-terminal. So we can derive end of file as well. And I'll show you why. We have end of file that we've now added to the list. Well, why do we add end of file when we're dealing with epsilons? Because these are follow sets, right? Well, when we're dealing with follow sets and we have all of our beta or everything to the right of the non-terminal derive epsilon, it's essentially 
like saying that you just have the empty string next to our beat. And if we only have the empty string following it, we can essentially ignore that they exist and look at our new definition. We've now temporarily ignoring that the C and the D exist and are looking at our new definition. We have still follow, we're still trying to find the follow of B with our new form where we have alpha non-terminal. Because we have alpha non-terminal, we try and find to find the follow of X, we find the follow of rule. So in this case, to find the follow of B, we would find the follow of S. And the follow of S is end of file, which is how end of file is derived. So follow of B is now complete. We'll add those back in and we'll continue on. Finding the follow of C, we have three definitions here. So finding the first one, we see our form, we have a beta. Follow of C is the first of D. Add it to our set. We know our first of D is D and epsilon. We return the D, not epsilon. Because D in this case is the end of our beta, we face a similar situation when we were doing the follow of B, where all of our beta turned to epsilon. If your entire beta turns to epsilon, you do rule one on your follow set. So on this case, where we're doing the follow of C, we would ignore that the D is there because D can derive epsilon. And find, to find the follow of C, we find the follow of S. So we have for the first of D, union with the follow of S, which in turn is just end of file. And we are now complete with our top C definition. Moving on to our next C definition, it's the exact same situation where we would union it with the first of D because what's following our C in our non-terminal beta uh, form is the first set of D. We already have that in our situation. You could add it for emphasis, but I find it unnecessary. But for completion's sake, I will add it. So we have the union with the first of D, which is exactly the same thing. And in this case, because this is the end of our beta and our beta can completely derive epsilon, we would return end of file as well. Now end of file is already in our set as is the first of D. So our set does not change. With our final non-terminal C, our form would be alpha non-terminal. And to find the follow of C, we would find the follow of C, a recursive call to itself. So it's not included specifically. If we have a non-terminal that has a recursive call to itself, it is not necessary unless it's a first step. If you have a situation where to find the follow of C, you have to find the follow of C. You do not add it as a contributor to your set. And as such, our set would be complete. Moving on to the follow of D, we have three D calls in this first one. Follow of D, we see it's of form alpha non-terminal. So follow of D is the follow of S. And we would union that with the second one where we have the same exact rule. So follow of D would be follow of A, which if we begin to build our set, we have end of file from the follow of S. For the follow of A, we have the first of B, which is B. For the last D call to find the follow of D, we see it's of rule one. Follow of D is the follow of D. It's a recursive call to itself. And as such, we do not include it. So our final follow sets would be as such. For this final example, we have a bit more complexity and I've provided the first sets below for reference. To find the follow of S, we look for any S calls. In this example, we have one S call. We actually do have a recursive call for our given start terminal. So we're gonna look at the format. We have a beta, which is any character following our non-terminal. So to find the follow of S, we would have the first of A, which we have below, which is A, B, and E. None of those are epsilon, so we can return them all. A, B, E. So we've derived A, B, and E from the first of A, and we do need to include one more character because it's our starting grammar. We include the end of file symbol. Moving to the follow of A, we have two A calls in this grammar. Starting with the first one, we would have an AD, D being our beta. So we would find the first of D, which is simple terminal D. We have the first of D. D cannot derive epsilon, so we do not go further with this definition. We move to our second A call, and we find that it's a form alpha non-terminal. So to find the follow of A, we find the follow of B. So I'm going to union the first of D with the follow of B, which we do not have currently, so we will recurse back. Finding the follow of B, we have one, two, three calls for B in this grammar. So starting with the first one, follow of B, we have a beta. So we would find the first of C, which starting to build our set, the first of C is A and B. Seeing that C cannot derive epsilon because B cannot derive epsilon, B does not, is not epsilon. And this call over here has a terminal, which cannot derive epsilon. So C cannot derive epsilon as such, this B is now complete. We do not need to look further. In this B call, we see that our format is of alpha non-terminal. 
So to find the follow of B, we need to find the follow of A, which we already have done. So we're going to union that with the follow of A, which up here is just a single D. So we will add D to our set. And for the final B call, we have it a form non-terminal beta. This time beta is a little different. It is a terminal. So we simply union that with the first of the terminal, which is the terminal A, which we already have in our set. So the follow of B is now complete. Now you may have noticed that I said we'd recurse back to follow of A because we needed to find the follow of B. And we do need to do that, but we did at the same time assume the follow of A to simply be the terminal D. This is a case where we see the follow of A can derive the follow of B and the follow of B can derive the follow of A. What we do in this scenario where you can theoretically have this infinite loop of recursive calls is find all of the base cases possible. So in the follow of A, we determined that D is a possible base case. And in the follow of B, we determined that A and B are possible base cases, ignoring the follow of A. Whatever is in the follow of B is also in the follow of A and vice versa because they reference each other. So every terminal except for end of file would be in both the follow of A and the follow of B. So everything in this set would be in this set and everything in this set would be in this set. So recursing back to the follow of A, we would add in our A and B terminals and our follow of A and follow of B are now complete. Moving for our follow of C, we have two placements for it. We notice our first one, it does not have a beta. So we call rule one, follow of C is the follow of S. So we have the follow of S which we return the set minus end of file for the follow set. So A, B, and E. And in this definition, we've returned everything in the set of the follow of S, which is A, B, and E minus the end of file. However, because this is our starting grammar and we take a second look at this, our starting grammar can be defined in form A, D, B, C, meaning that if we're looking for the next terminal is after this non-terminal, we're looking at the end of our input. If we're looking at the end of our input, we're looking at the end of file. So in this case, where you have the follow of your original set, your, your starting grammar, you include the end of file as well. Now, if I were calling, for example, the follow of A, and if A had end of file in it, for example, this follow of A call would not bring end of file into the follow of B unless we were able to fully derive all non-terminals into epsilon. So the follow of C has been defined as the follow of S, which has these terminals in it. Moving to our next definition of C, we have a beta. So we would find the first of B. So union with the first of B, which our first of B simply has A, B, and epsilon. We would bring A and B over. A and B are already in our set, so we ignore it. Because B can derive epsilon, this would also be a situation in which the follow of C is a form rule one, where if we ignore our B, because B has now in this situation turned to epsilon, we simply have a non-terminal. So to find the follow of C, we would need to include the follow of A. So I'll add that B back and we would union this with the follow of A running out of space here. And the follow of A is A, B, and D. So we would add D to our set. And we are now complete with follow of C because we have gone over both non-terminal function calls and we're ready to move on to the follow of D. Follow of D, we have one simple call for it. So to find the follow of this, we find the first of the beta. So first of B is equal to A, B, and epsilon. So we bring A and B over minus epsilon. Because B though can derive epsilon, we need to find the first of the next beta. So we would union first of B with the first of C. First of C can derive A and B, which are already in our set. And because C cannot derive epsilon, we are finished with our follow set, which is just A and B. So our follow sets and first sets for this given grammar would look like this. Taking a more general view, follow sets can definitely be confusing at first, especially given the online consensus and the resources previously given in class. But what I would do is work on making your own grammar rules. These aren't hard to make, just come up with a bunch of random stuff. Whether they have a bunch of recursive parsing or not, that's up to you. And slowly work on it until you can build big enough grammar sets that you are confident in your follow and first skills. Because these are going to be necessary for both the midterm and the project. As well as the homework, which is due on the 26th. I hope at least one of you found this helpful. And let me know if you have any questions. Thank you.